Hello everyone, my name is Mohammad Tayyab and in this video I'm going to share how you can perform RFM analysis on Power BI. So let me first show you what RFM analysis is. It's a technique to segment our customer uh, based on the metric like decency, frequency and monetary. So here we have decency which means the number of days since the customer last purchase date and then we have the frequency which is the number of transactions of a customer over a period of time and then we have the monetary value uh, which is the total amount spent by the customer over a period of time. And after getting all these three values, we would then do a score. So let's say we would do a score from uh, one to five. And uh, after utilizing these scores, we would then classify the customer uh, into different segments like champions, loyal customer, at least new customer, lost customer, and many more segments based on our business use case. So let me show you the data set that we will be using to perform RFM analysis. So just a second. Let me open the data set. So this is the data set that we have. Uh, we will be using this data set to calculate DCLC frequency and monetary value. And uh, same way we will then be segmenting our customer based on those values. So data set is very simple. We have invoice number, store code, description, quantity, invoice date, unit price, customer ID. Uh, we have some blank customer IDs here, but we have some populated as well. Uh, country and then the total revenue, which is the multiplication of quantity and unit price. So let's try to calculate those three metrics like decency, frequency, and monetary uh, by customer ID because this analysis is totally dependent upon customer. So we will be grouping it by customer ID. So let me create our new table here, where we will be performing all these kind of analysis. So I will call it as customer RFM, and I will use a summarize function here. I will refer to the table, and then I would first try to get the last purchase date, because in order to calculate these census, we would first need the last purchase date of each customer. So I will call a column named last purchase date, and here I will use a maximum of invoice date. But before that, I would need to group it by customer ID that I just forgot. So, okay. I got customer ID. I got last purchase date. I can then directly calculate the frequency, which is nothing but a distinct count of invoice number. Why I'm doing this thing count? Because there are uh, there are invoice numbers that are getting repeated because the customer can buy multiple products within a single invoice. So that's why I'm using the distinct count here. Next, we have the monetary. For that, we can just do a sum of the revenue column. And let's try to see the output here. Okay, so we got customer ID, we got the last purchase date of a customer, we got frequency, uh, the number of transactions basically, and then we have the monetary value. So now that we got last purchase date, let's try to calculate the recency, which will be the number of days since the customer last purchase date. I will call this column as recency. And I will use a formula date if to calculate the number of days. I will use today's date as a refer. I will use day as a unit to calculate number of days. So we got number of days uh, between the customer last purchase date and today's date. Number is a bit higher because there is a large gap between today's date and the last purchase date. So I think let's try to use the maximum of the date in the overall data set to have the number in a boundary. But obviously, you guys can use today's date. It all depends upon your business use case. If you are getting the latest data, then you then you might want to calculate that based on the today's date. So I got recency, I got frequency, I got monetary values. So my next step would be to calculate the score, basically to normalize these three values. And then we would then do a segmentation of these customers. So let's try to calculate the R score, means recency score. Here we will be using the function name percentile x, which we can incorporate in our switch statement. 
so let's say if customer this and c is less than equal to percentile this is the formula that we will be using to uh, calculate percentiles uh, of the recency value uh, we would be doing a scoring from 1 to 5 where 5 means higher the score and low means low the score so uh, there is a little twist here is uh, recency means how recently the customer came to our store so Higher the number of days would be the customer came to our store way back. He is now an old customer. So low the recency score means, or even low number of days means the customer recently came to our store. So we should be giving him an high score, let's say four or five. So that is the basic agenda here. So let's use the table customer RFM. And here we would again call it and a recency column. And here we would define the percentile. Okay. So here I can give it a percentile of two and then give it a score of five. Let me show you what does this mean. So by default, what here would happen is uh, it will first sort the data in ascending order and then do a percentile. So the data in the first 20 percentile means the recency value is low, so we should give them five score. But let's say if the people are in 40th percentile, so they have a, a bit large score as compared to the 20th percentile or even large number of days. So we should give them a score of four, right? So I don't need to add brackets here. Let me copy paste again. And here we would say, three and the people in the 80 percentile means they have the recency uh, value a bit large or even very large because they, they they will have a large number of days so we should give them a low score and for the last segment last percentile we will give them a score of one so let's see how the data looks like let me sort it in an ascending order. So as you guys can see, this is the customer who recently came to our score. Like uh, today, you can see. So we gave him a score of five. And then we have the customer who have a large recency value. So we have given them a low score, right? So this is the reason behind using the percentile. The people in the first 20 percentile, we are giving them a five score. So let's try to calculate the frequency score now. So I will call it as frequency score. I will use a switch statement here. We'll add two. And then I will refer to frequency and say if it's greater than equal to, here I would say greater than equal to. So let's say percentile x int because I want to include the page percentile. So let's say I'm wrapping this and then I will use the frequency because here we are calculating the score of frequency and here, sorry, I just hit enter. I shouldn't do that. So people in this, I would give them a score of five. What does this mean? So the people that are in the 18th percentile or above that, we are giving them a five score. Why is that? Because these will all be the people that will have a frequency value higher than the 18th percentile. So that is why I'm using greater than equal to sign here. So all the people that are in the 18th percentile or above than that, we would give them a five score. They will have a frequency value larger than the all the people in the uh, percentile less than 80. So let me copy and paste it here. And here I will use 60 percentile, give them a score of four. And then the 40 percentile, give them a score of three. 20 percentile, give them a score of two, sorry. And then lastly, I will give all the other as a score of one. So let's look into this. Uh, I will sort it from ascending to descending order. 
so here you guys can see uh, low frequency score uh, low frequency means we are giving them a low score and we have higher frequency means we are giving them high score so here it actually calculated the value from 2 to 5 because here we don't have any value uh, that is zero so that's why it actually tried to calculate from 2 to 5 but don't worry so let me copy this because this is something that will be same for monetary value we just need to uh, change the formula for even column here so i will defer monetary here okay so here i got monetary i will rename this as monetary value and score so let me sort this from ascending to descending okay we got some negative values here uh, which i think basically means uh, these products were returned so that's why we have negative values here uh, but if you look at the monetary value uh, like customers with low monetary value we are giving them a score of one and we have customers with high monetary value we are giving them a score of i think there is a mistake there in that formula so i would need to sorry i would also had to change this as well so monetary monetary okay so now the numbers will be better let me sort it again so we have a score from one to five right high monetary means we are giving them a high score so now that we got recency score we got frequency score we got monetary score we would then use these scores to calculate the segmentation so let me create a new column name segment and here i can use multiple switch statements to segment our customers so for a simplicity i can define four to five segments but uh, you can define multiples based on your business use case so i will use few statement here customer rfm and let's say uh, if our score is uh, five and let's say if customer rfm m score is let's say also five actually i would need to use and here right so let's say is customer rfm m score is also five then i can say that the customer is a champion customer because he is a top person in all the three categories okay so next what are the other cases that i can apply let's say if f score is greater than equal to four and let's say customer rfm m score is also greater than equal to four then i can say the customer is a loyal customer i'm using two scores here just to show you we can use two scores so we got the frequency higher we got the monetary higher uh, we are not checking the recency here uh, we are just checking the pattern and seeing okay the customer this customer has come to our store many times and he also uh, uh, help me to generate more revenue so we should be calling them a loyal customer right so let me actually copy paste here and a bit change let's say if f score is not f let's use r score if let's say r is less and let's say if uh, f is also less right so the customer revenue is low the customer frequency also low so i can say something like this customer is at least right and then i can copy paste again the value and I can say if it's B and C is uh, let's say greater than or equal to four, and uh, it's B and C. Uh, let's say it's all it's but it's B and C. Let's say it's less than or equal to two. Then I can say something like it's a new customer, right? Because this is the customer who recently came to our store, so that's why his uh, R score will be a bit high. But his frequency will be low. After all, he is a new customer, right? So, okay. Other 
and there will be some other cases we are defining them in an other segment but obviously you can define multiple segments so that is the segment we have uh, at least champion lower view customers and others so that's the all calculations that we needed to do and after that we can just you know uh, do a dashboarding so let's say uh, i'm adding segments here and then i'm also counting the segment as well so let's say i do a count here so this is the data that we have. We have most the other customer and then loyal customer at least champion new customer. We can use a visualization to show them in a, a bit good way. Okay. So, okay. And then we can use some cards to also tell the number here, let's say, this is the total customer i'm using the i should use the distinct count okay so i can say total customers and then we also have customers like uh, i can add a filter segment i can filter on champion and then i should be calling them as a champion customers, right? So these are the champion customers. And in the same way, obviously, I can uh, have a summary of different segments as well. So the total loyal customers as well we have, right? So yeah, this way we can add multiple cards here, but it's also showing here as well. So let me copy and paste it and convert it into our table. And let me add the customer IDs. And then the decency score, quality score, frequency score. I would not do a summarization. Don't summarize. Don't summarize. And then I can also define the segments, right? So the reason why I'm adding this table as well, because let's say uh, we want to target different customers uh, based on their different pattern of purchasing. Let's say I'm adding a slicer here and adding segments. So let's say we want to target the loyal customers. So these are the lo all loyal customers that we have. We can look at their recency, frequency, and monetary score, uh, their different patterns and target them. And in the same way, we can target our at least customers. We can uh, provide the emails or even IDs of uh, those customers to marketing team to look into them, uh, to find a way to get them back, uh, basically to increase our revenue efforts. So that is the dashboard. Uh, I, I will basically add this dashboard uh, in the description here. That is something that I have done. I have applied some coloring and, you know, uh, presented in a nice manner. So that is something that you can use uh, because uh, obviously in the RFM, our main goal was to calculate uh, all the calculations uh, which we did. And that is something that you guys can build at your own based on your own creativity. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.